How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your brother QL1110 NWB thermal printer with, with a Mac computer. I should have made this video months ago, but I didn't. I'm so sorry. But I've been called out in the comments for being deceptive. They've said it does not work with Mac whatsoever, which is not true. Most of the time, if you're having a problem, it's a user error. I'd never used Brother's instructions when I set this up, but I can ensure you that this does indeed work with Mac. We're gonna go over step-by-step step how to get it set up with Mac. And Mr. Reddit Snows, I'm sorry that you felt deceived. It was not my intention at all making the review because I got it set up with Mac really, really easily. As you will see in this video, it is the only air print compatible thermal printer on the market right now. And if something's air print compatible, it is compatible with Mac. Hopefully this will solve your printer problems and frustration if you haven't been able to get it working with Mac and save you the hassle of having to return it like Reddit Snows had to. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions throughout the video, hit me up in the comments below and I will try my my best to help or reach out to me on Instagram. With all that being said, let's get this printer set up, connected to our network, and install it on a Mac. Here we are with the Brother printer. Before we plug it in, I'm going to explain some things that might save you some troubleshooting in the future. The way that this printer works, they use what's called DK labels, and they have these little spool and foot things that goes down here in the printer presses on these little plastic pins that are attached to the motherboard and it lets the printer know what size, what dimensions of media are loaded in this thing. It tells the printer by the holes on the foot that, hey, I have 62 millimeter by 29 millimeter labels in there. Or this foot design says, hey, I have 102 by 152 millimeters in there, or also known as four by six. Now the starter label that they give you with Brother, I don't understand why, but they give you a starter label roll that is not a true four by six. It's 4.07 by 6.4 inches. And once you set up with that starter label, all of your devices are set to 4.07 by 6.4. And then when you buy third party labels off of Amazon that are true six by four, you get the red blink error, they don't communicate correctly, the labels don't print exactly right, and you get the red blink error. If you print from mobile, it won't even print. If you print from your Mac, it'll print, but then it will give you a blink. And it's just, it's just frustrating if you don't understand how the labels work. And it's 100% user error. What I have here is a 4x6, not a 4.07 by 6.4 roll of labels that I got off of Amazon. I will put a link to these in the description. That is what the foot looks like. I'm going to load these labels in here. The third party labels are much, much cheaper, especially if you buy them in bulk off of Amazon. Put our roll right like that. The printer power supply just takes this two prong standard figure eight, plug that in there. Uh, then you're gonna plug that into the wall. Before we turn the printer on, I'm going to reset it because I bought this used and I wanna get rid of any Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, previous printer roll settings in there. So in order to reset this printer, you're going to hold both the power, the cut button, and then you're gonna release the cut button while holding the power button, and then press the cut button six more times. You're gonna get a light sequence on the front, and then it's gonna reset the printer. Press these and hold these for a little bit. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we get all them flashing lights, means that the printer is resetting. All of the previous data stored in here is getting erased and now it is reset to the factory state. Now we're gonna have to get this on our network. I'm going to turn the Wi-Fi on. I'm going to hold the WPS button until we get a blink. And now I'm going to go to my router and turn on my WPS on my router in order to link the printer and the router. There's my WPS button on my router. I'm gonna hold it down. That's gonna start blinking. Depending on the router that you have, it might be in a different place. You might have it in the back. We're back at the printer. This is blinking. It's eventually, there it goes, solid light, which means it has connected to our router. So if you wanna pause the video and read this comment, this is a perfect description of the frustration that can happen if it is a user error or just lack of information around a product. You just get frustrated, you rage cap, 
exclamation point things that are not true at the person making the YouTube video. Reddit snooze, I forgive you. I should have made this video before, but we're doing it now. You're gonna wanna go up into spotlight search and type in printer and scanners, and then go there. Or you can go down here to system preferences, go to printers and scan, hit the plus button. The printer is already on our network, so it pops up right here. QL1110 NWB. You're going to click on that, and it's already automatically doing everything itself. It uses the AirPrint driver. This is very important, meaning that it works on any iOS device, any Mac device, that supports AirPrint, which is a huge accomplishment by brother. It's something that I don't think Rolo will ever get into because Rolo doesn't create software and hardware. They just outsource it. The Chinese printer companies, I don't even think are big enough to work with Apple on AirPrint. Dymo doesn't have anything with AirPrint driver. Like brother is a big enough company to have an AirPrint driver. Uh, Zebra, I don't think they have any AirPrint compatible printers, but they do their own thing kind of. So anyways, we're gonna hit add and that's how you install it on Mac. We can do a couple of setting tweaks that will make sure that this printer prints normally. I'm gonna pull up a sample label right here. Uh, it's in four by six format. I'm gonna hit Command P or you can go to File Print. And it pulls up Brother QL 1110 NWB. It's in eight and a half by 11 format. And if we printed that, it would not print correctly. We need to put it in the correct paper size. So we hit that drop down and go to four by six right there. I'm going to hit print. It's gonna send it through space, through the network to the printer. You hit the cut button and there is your label. Four by six, adhesive, beautiful. It works on Mac, it's very, very easy. I did not look at the brother instructions whatsoever when I made this tutorial, so I apologize if their instructions for Mac are confusing and convoluted, but with AirPrint, it's really, really, really easy. You'll wanna to go to last use settings, print another label that will save that four by six setting. So next time you pull up a label that you wanna print it, you won't have to change it to four by six. If for some reason you print it in the wrong dimension, so let me pick like 58 by 58 millimeters. I'm gonna send this to the printer and you're gonna see that it doesn't print correctly. It prints something really small. It's not the correct settings. That's why it doesn't work right. You're gonna wanna make sure that the printer signal that you're sending to the printer is four by six. Otherwise, you're gonna run into issues. On eBay, you have to go to a specific place. You're gonna have to go to My eBay Selling. You're gonna open a order if you have an order to ship or you're gonna go down here uh, to order shipping labels, pick a more actions, print another label on a previous order. That's gonna pull up the shipping screen. You're gonna have to go over here to what probably says eight and a half by 11 if you haven't changed it already. And you're gonna need to change it by four by six and then hit save. You can go back and hit preview and that'll pull up a sample label. You can command P that. But now you're printing in a browser. You're not printing in the Mac print dialog. You're gonna have to change that paper size to four by six, or you have to hit print system dialog and it should come up with four by six in your last used settings. Either way, that should print perfectly fine. There's our sample label. Everything looks good. We'll do Etsy. We're gonna go to Etsy. You're gonna go over here to this little gear. Hit that, go to shipping settings. This is telling Etsy, hey, I want my label to be in four by six, not in eight and a half by 11, because it defaults to eight and a half by 11. So you go to shipping label options, scroll down to download preferences and change it from keep my labels one per page or two per page to format for four by six. That will format it for the brother label printer or any four by six label printer. That's what you have to do is tell the platform, I want my label in four by six, because it's gonna default to like a normal printer that most people have at their house, which is eight and a half by 11. I have Poshmark on the phone here, I'll show you that. So on Poshmark, you go to your profile, scroll down to my seller tools, and then you'll go to shipping label settings, and you'll have to check four by six instead of eight and a half by 11. 
in order to get that on Poshmark. Whatever platform you're on, you have to change it to 4x6. Uh, it's not gonna be magic and just do it itself. It's a settings thing. And once you change it to 4x6, the next label will be in 4x6. It isn't, it isn't just going to make an old label 4x6. It's the next label. I will put a link to the labels that I use in the description for both 4x6 and I have these ones that I use for Amazon and I have a tutorial on how I use these for Amazon. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. I thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, throw them in the comment section. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.